here we go welcome everyone <laughs> we are yeah we are uh this is leah from imax victoria i am here with tim archer uh sound quality is going to be a little iffy here because we've had to uh rejink the uh the audio and and he's coming through my cell phone so thanks all for your understanding uh, i promise you we did do a test but sometimes it just it just doesn't play out so uh, when we started, Tim, we were talking about you getting into the giant screen world. So how did that happen? Well, it was um, right place, right time. Um, I, I was actually, you know, blessed to the fact that back in the mid 80s, I uh, was invited to work for three weeks at a studio in, in Toronto. And three weeks turned into three months, which turned into 18 years. And it just so happened that that was you know, one of the main videos that was in um, doing sound for the giant screen. So I was able to get right in back in uh, like, you know, sort of, uh, you know, mid 80s, you know, back then. That's amazing. What has been, this is a, this is a personal question that, um, that didn't come up, but what has been your favorite project to work on? You know, I, that is a great question. Um, it's been, there's, there, there's been a ton of them, but I'll tell you, um, when it comes to uh, location recording, going right from the record, right to the design, right through to final product. It would, it would have to be great bear rain for it um, for a number of reasons. Uh, it's one of my favorite places on the planet, and be able to spend as much time as I did, um, you know, out there was just a godsend, and, and it was, and, and I think the film worked out tremendously. I'm really proud of it. Yeah. Um, when it comes to sound design, though, um, the film that I did back in probably 2000. Uh, which was called Bugs, Bugs 3D. Right. And if you think about a film like Bugs, there's very little location recording. We did atmospheres and, and things like that, but, you know, the Bugs aren't making, you know, individual sound effects and things when you're out in the field because there's two very large cameras and they're very close to these, you know, to these, to these Bugs. So we ended up creating a room at the studio that looked a whole lot like the Borneo rainforest, and I had live bugs in the room. I had I had cockroaches and tarantulas and crickets and all these other cool bugs, and I was able to, with contact microphones, what I call insect microphones, you know, I was able to record footsteps of crickets on pieces of wood. I was able to record the munching sound of, of hornworms eating spinach. And so if you ever get a chance to see the film and you'll hear caterpillars all eating leaves, those are actually real bugs eating stuff, right? I, so, if the, so when it came to sound design, that was definitely my favorite. I can't imagine what the world looks like to you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like having had those experiences of our world on just a totally different plane than what the majority of us experience, I can't even imagine what you see when you look around. Yeah. Just so yeah. cool. It does, it usually bothers my wife and other people. My wife's used to it, but it bothers other people because we'll be walking out there. Shut up, stop, stop. <laughs> listen. What? Word. So what? No, no, listen, right? So, you know, that, that, that happens, but it's, a, it's an obsession. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, so speaking of Great Bear Rainforest, I know that that film, um, that film is, is amazing. It's particularly special for us at IMAX Victoria, for our community, um, for the community of, of British Columbia to see such a special and unique place brought to life on the giant screen in such a beautiful manner. Um, Ian McAllister just did such a fab fabulous job on that. I have had the privilege of hearing, some of our pass holders have also had the privilege of hearing some of your stories of collecting sound for that film, being out there in the region. Um, and I know that you were really happy with how much of that sound, um, the sound that is in the film, is genuine, genuinely recorded in the Great Bear Rainforest. Is that the case for all films or was that special on Great Bear? Oh, that's a, that's a great question. I appreciate that question, to be honest, because... You know, it's why I always say that, you know, Ian and, and Jeff and, and all the other, you know, documentary filmmakers are out there documenting fact. Okay. So when they're out there, the things that they're shooting are actually happening. There's no live, or there's no, you know, tamed animals, there's no cages. There's, I mean, these are, you know, these are real. So why not, you know, do the same with audio? Why not have 
real audio. So when the audience is there experiencing it, they know, and especially if they, you know, if, if they do know that what they're experiencing is actually real. So Great Bear Rainforest, um, I'd say, you know, at least I'd say, you know, 80% of what you're hearing was actually recorded by me in those locations. Now, of course, um, you know, there's a, a little bit of sound design, you know, underwater when things are moving around, and you know, so that's kind of in my library. Um, the thunderstorms, you know, you know, you're going to get good sounds and thunderstorms, but you know, you're always going to enhance it. You know, get the subwoofers going by adding, you know, stuff from the library as well. But the majority of it, you know, is is real. And and when you ask about other films, um, the answer is no, and, mm. and, and especially in giant screen. And and the reason was mainly uh, back in the day. When the when the IMAX film was uh, was was all shot in film, the the the, proje- the the cameras sounded like you know small electric chainsaws. Right. So you've got these you know these whirring buzzing you know you know cameras around. It was hard to record audio. Now, even back then, I was still I was still doing it a, a fair bit, but I was there after the camera was gone or before the camera arrived, and and, and on and on, which I, which I you know still tend to do. But the mentality of the filmmakers was a bit different back then. And it was like, well, since the cameras are so noisy, you know what? We don't need to bring a sound guy. Um, right. I've been fighting for, for many years um, and, and winning mostly, which, is, which has been good. Um, but yeah, so, you know, Great Bear Rainforest is a, is a, is a testament to, uh, you know, being able to actually experience what it does sound like out there. Right, right. Yeah. All right, as a follow-up to that, this is a, this is a question from one of our pass holders who is also Leah. Um, Tim, what was the most unexpected combination of sound you've had to create for sound effect? So in those cases where you are engineering sound, what is sort of the most unexpected way that came to life? Well, it's, it's an interesting question. You know, back in the day when you know, I wasn't doing, you know, just uh, documentary, just giant screen, we were doing a lot of sci-fi films. Right. right. And, and, you know, I, I do have a story of, of taking, you know, two, three, actually three microphones and, it, and, and, and having them above my newborn baby's crib. And whenever she woke up and screamed for mom. Now, one thing I will tell you is that when you're down in the living room hitting record when they start, when she starts to scream and mom's on her way up and you say, oh, no, no, don't go. Just wait. Yeah, you, you, say, you, you, say, you say that to a new mother. <laughs> Oh man! So, but there, there are films like you know Scanners and 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 and, and Screamers and, and those types of films that we were doing back in the day, where you know my daughter was a star, right? When when it came to these you know these you know crazy screams, you know, you know they take take the screams and you you add you know other things to it and on and on. But my my true love really is 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 about you know how to create reality. I find reality way harder because right. you have to be able to convince people that what they're hearing is actually real when it is real right and and sometimes it's not and and you know i i'd say that uh you know when it comes to um surprises you know for me um we are shooting a film of actually a film about soundscape ecology um in costa rica one of the one of the destinations was costa rica and there they were they were shooting these you know micro shots of these little leaf cutter ants leaf cutter ants are those little ants that all that run around in lines and they have the big leaves that they're carrying into their into their um, into their holes, and so they were shooting this. And I said, "Well, what would happen if I took a little tiny microphone and I, you know, put it down the hole where the ants are? I mean, who knows?" And when I when I did that, it was like you expect to hear, you know, the on and on. All of a sudden, I started hearing all these really bizarre sounds coming from this this you know hive or whatever of of ants, and they were you know squeaking and making all these great noises, and you know I. I actually, you know, one of the scientists was down there, and, and, I, and I said, take a listen to this. He said, you know, that's something that no one has ever heard. See, to me, that's phenomenal. Right. To me, you know, that is a surprise, right? When you can say, guess what? The scientists that work in soundscape ecology have never heard something that we just found, which I think is pretty awesome. That's amazing. Yeah, it's it, it blows my mind to think about the... There's just, there's so much of our world that we haven't heard, right? And it's your job to, to get to bring that to us and in the giant screen world to audiences, right? Where we're so lucky to have that. Um, so the next question I have is from a guest, uh, whose name is Brenda. And I love this question because, um, we so rarely get 
to really jump into what about our theater, our theater IMAX Victoria is special when it comes to sound. Um, I'm not a sound expert, which is um, kind of funny considering the technical sound issues we had for this, <laughs> for this live stream. So everyone really believes me when I say that. Um, but I know that what we have is special and that it's designed to, to give folks the best auditory uh, experience. So the question is, um, back when you addressed IMAX members about the making of Great Bear Rainforest, uh, you mentioned that you frequently sat in row G in the center uh, to mix sound for your films. You said that the sound in that seat was the best anywhere. Why? What okay. makes it exceptional? Okay, um, the, the seat is G20, <laughs> right? Um, and and here, here's the thing, it's it's more of a technical reason. Now, I'll give you I'll give you a, a bit about the theater itself. Um, the next time you're in the theater, you look at the dimensions of the theater, um, the height, the width, the size. Um, the the walls are, are not parallel, right? Um, and that's for acoustic reasons. The walls are actually soft as well, um, also for an acoustic for acoustic reasons. There's no there's no hard surfaces. Um, if you go behind where the speakers are, that wall is completely soft. Right. And so what we're doing in that sense is we're saying, okay, speakers, you are not going to use the room at all as an instrument. You're going to use speakers directly to audience so the room never plays. Right. So that's, that's, that's the neat part about the rooms, and that's why these rooms sound so amazing because, they're, because the room itself isn't playing a part, right? It's just the speakers. Now, G20, uh, next time you're in there, if you don't mind you know, getting on your hands and knees, look underneath <laughs> G20, and you'll see there's a little, there's a little electrical box there and that box is actually has a conduit that goes all the way up to, to the projection booth and i've got cat5 cables going from that box now the reason that i chose g20 because the conduit was already there right. <laughs> that, that is considered considered, considered um uh, audio center of, of of the theater right okay? um, back in the day when the theater was built and, and all the theaters they ran a conduit down to audio center um and that way when they were when they were building the theater and tuning the room they had a place to plug in. So I just, I, what I do is I, I use that same seat. I plug all my, my gear in there. But then when I'm mixing, and I'll mix it from that point, then I'll go sit in, you know, 50, 30, 30, 40, 50 other seats to make sure that it you know, works as well as it can in all seats. Right. But you know, G, G20 is my seat. <laughs> there you go. So now everyone knows what's going on at IMAX when we close our doors at night. You know, everyone leaves from watching Star Wars. That's when Tim heads in to plug into G20 and mix all of his sound. <laughs> um, we are, though, I, you know, I'm relatively new to the giant screen world. And I, when Great Bear Rainforest was being um, made and you and Ian were, were using, Ian McAllister, uh, were using the theater to, to test sound and to test footage. I just, I, I, it's so cool to have, um, just to see so clearly, um, you know, a theater playing a role in filmmaking, um, is, yeah. is so cool. I, I take all the credit, honestly, yeah. for, for yeah. Great Bear. Yeah. I mean, obviously I played a huge role. Um, so the next question, uh, is it's sort of a two-parter. Um, so the, I think the process of filmmaking is fascinating. Um, and I think we often think about filmmaking as being um, the collection of, of getting shots and then putting them together. But obviously, there's a lot more that goes into it. Where in the timeline or where in the production does sound come into it? Like, where are you joining a, a production to start working on the sound design? Yeah, well, you know, it's, that's a great question because um, in some projects, depending on what they are, you know, I, I, they, they bring me at, 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 you know, the last minute, which, you know, to, for, for me, it's, 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 it's a bit handcuffing because if I know that I'm going to a place, let's say, you know, super power dogs, for example, which happen kind of all over the world. Um, you know, I want to be able to do my research on what is right. in these areas before I go. Okay. I want to know that when I'm, you know, in Kenya, what can I be looking out for? What, where's, where you know where are those species? What should I, what should I be listening for? Because I want to record as much indigenous you know um, you know wildlife and, and atmospheres as I possibly can to bring them back you know to, to the edit. Um, so if I get that chance you know to to get involved early, I do a ton of research. Um, even with even with Great Bear, you know that you know we don't live that far away, but there's still a lot of things up there 
that you know that I want to be you know that I want to be prepared for. Um, so, best case scenario, I've had people say, "I've got an idea for a film. Right. I want to be involved." Well, that that's the best. Worst case scenario, and it's happened before, especially back in the day. Oh, we've shot all the footage and the film's <laughs> been cut. You know, put some sound to it. Right. And that that's also happened. Right. And just because we can doesn't mean we should. Um, but uh, I hope that answers the question. But yeah, it's yeah. Actually better just for my own sanity. I, I also say, you know, it doesn't matter how, how long it takes. I'm at a point where if, if, if I'm working on a film, right, I don't charge any more for working on the film for two years than I do for two weeks. Right. Right? Because the job is still the job. Yeah. So why not utilize me, right? That's the way I look at it. Totally. So as a follow-up to that, um, and this is a question from one of our past holders, Patricia, um, what's the longest amount of time you've spent trying to get that audio collected so sort of to get that audio perfect for i don't know a scene or a whole movie or or sort of what's the what's the outlier there yeah that's, that's a good one um you know that that goes that goes way back it goes way back to an imax film i'm gonna say this might even be 1991 okay and it was a film called mountain gorillas okay. way back in the day now back then we were on tape we weren't on digital, and we weren't on hard drive. We were on tape. So right off the bat, you you know, times everything by ten, okay? Um, and in and and plus everything was analog, so it wasn't like you know you know push a button and make things happen. Um, and mixing, we were we were we were lucky if we were getting you know thirty seconds to a minute mixing a day, right? Mm-hmm. And and it was and. And not for, for any lack of anything, but it was such an involved track. The other one, honestly, which was just as involved for the same reason, was Fires of Kuwait. Because okay. Fires of Kuwait was a monster of a film. And and what we found is because it was, you know, it's like listening to, to, you know, jet engines for eight hours a day. That, you know, you had to you had to leave the theater, you know, for you know a half hour and just, just, just take, you know, ear breaks. Right, listening breaks before you can come back in. When people watch the film, any loud film, it's like, okay, that's okay for 40 minutes, but try doing it, you know, shot by shot for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. It's a bit different now, and I'll say time wise, it's a bit different because I can try things a lot faster because it's on computers now. Right. Um, you know, I can test things. I can say, you know what, I'm going to go down this road and, and do all these kind of weird EQs and, and mix it online. I don't like that. Undo, undo, undo. Right. Right. So today it's a whole lot easier than it was, you know, back in the early 90s. Yeah. 90s. Man, I get that that comment that you made about the the experience of mixing for Fires of Kuwait. We had in a in the film festival, um, not this last festival, the festival before, we had uh, North of Superior um, play right. as sort of a dawn of IMAX filmmaking. And there's yeah. just there's a short segment in that, and that's the original yeah. IMAX film, right? The the first one that they did in in IMAX. And there's just a, a short segment for those folks who haven't seen it of some of the wildfires um, up in northern Canada. And it it is terrifying, to be honest, like the the feel of that sound in the room and in your chest is just like nothing I've ever experienced before. Not necessarily in volume, but just in the the sort of body. Yeah, the intensity that comes through. Just I can't imagine you having to, to sit for hours and hours and sift through different clips of that. That's uh that's a lot. So what this is I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap up with one more question of of what what do you love most about what you do? Because I think we all know and can see how passionate you are about about your work, and it comes through in the finished products. The the films that you work on are fabulous. So, what do you love most about it? What keeps you doing it? You know, it's 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 a, a double loaded question. I mean, uh, there there's there's thirty five years, and I still jump out of bed thinking, what can I do next when it comes to sound? What what can I do next when it comes to audio? Um, you know, and and it's you know the the thing is is that putting smiles on people's faces and I I'm able I'm absolutely blessed to be able to you know you know tour North America and and talk about what I do and the questions that I get and I go man these people are actually listening and they they actually you know care about what I'm doing and that that's you know I'm stoked about that um, when it comes to technical I'm really stoked that that. Uh, that you know, gear got you know a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter, 
<laughs> easier to use. Um, so I'm always trying to, you know, redo redo my rig. I'm always trying to find unique ways to capture sounds. And, and I mean, let's face it, we're in a we're in a unprecedented time right now, and I'm not on location. I'm not right. on in airplanes. I've lost, well, lost, postponed four, you know, major jobs. Um, so, you know, what do we do? Well, you know, we, we, we rethink. Now, when I rethink, I still rethink audio. I still rethink sound design. I still rethink, you know, what can I do? You know, and if I can get, maybe I can show you something here real quick. So I just do this. Now, I'm not sure if you can see that. A little bit. Right? So that, that is, uh, that is two, two microphones on top of a van. Um, and I may, I got I might have another one here that looks a little bit easier. Hang on a second here. How about there? Okay. So, okay. So, what I've decided to do is, you know, everybody, I mean, most people are aware of the of the 7 p.m. Um, you know, cheer for healthcare. Right. And everybody's getting out on their balconies and everybody's, pot, you know, pots and pans and singing and, and, and on and on. And I'm going to go out and record it. And so you'll probably see me in your neighborhood. <laughs> it looks kind of looking like a little bit like an ice cream truck. <laughs> and then with microphones on the top. And uh, I mean, actually, if you are hearing this and, you, and your neighborhood does do this, email me through Leah or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I'll, I'll come by at 7. And I'm going to pop over to Vancouver. The, the Stanley Park cannon now goes off at 7, it's not 9. And as soon as the, the cannon goes off, everybody starts cheering. And I want to record that. It's, it's happening until the end of April because it's, we're not we're not going to have this again. Well, hopefully we're not going to have this again. Right. This is the only time to get it. That excites me. Right. You know when I when I know that that uh, that you know people in the future will never be able to hear downtown Vancouver, especially uh, Victoria is not quite as noisy as Vancouver, but they'll never hear it this quiet. Right. And and why? Right. So to be able to take these tracks, record them now, and then you know a year from now put them up against tracks at seven o'clock you know, in Vancouver and say, you see where we were and where we are now and, and be able to analyze it. So yeah. I'm excited about all of it. It's just, you know, find, find, find new ways to, 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 you know, to create and find new ways to accept this new normal. Right. Fascinating. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Apologies uh, both to you and to, to our viewers for our, our hiccup today, but, uh, that's life. Um, so thank you all for watching. Thank you, Tim, for, for joining us today. Um, and everyone will get a follow-up email to this or all of our annual pass holders will get a follow-up email from this. It will include uh, some contact information for Tim. So if you do have any follow-up questions or if you want to send over a great location for a seven o'clock um, shout out for our healthcare workers, um, feel free to send it over to him. And thank you. I'm, I'm if we could just give Tim a round of applause and I'll just listen for that, uh, that would be great. So thank you, Tim. We're going to sign off here. Thanks everyone for joining us. I would, uh, thank you so much. And I would love to hear from all of you. It'd be awesome. Perfect. All right. Okay. Thanks everybody. Bye.